going to introduce the second speaker of today, uh, Professor Nakaoka. And uh, Professor Nakaoka will speak about localization of extrangulated categories. Please. Ah, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to talk here. Today, I will talk about the localization of extrangulated categories. This is a joint work with Yasuaki Ogawa and Arashi Sakai. So let me start with an uh, introduction. So extrangulated category, which I call ET category for short in this talk, can be regarded as a common generalization of exact categories and triangulated categories. So it fits here. It is defined as an additive category equipped with some extra structure. So one of the advantages to use ET category is that this class is closed by some basic operations, such as taking extension closed subcategories, ideal quotients, and the relative theories. But we know another basic operation for additive categories, namely uh, localization. So how about localizations for ET categories? So ET category contains um, exact categories, abelian categories, and triangulated categories as special cases. For just so, such categories, we know several localizations. For example, we know the very deep quotient of triangulated categories. And similarly, cell quotients of abelian categories. Well, cell quotients are generalized to exact categories, I mean the localization of exact category by percolating subcategories by recent work by recent work of Henrik Kwan van Rusmalen. There is also another localization by by resolving subcategories given by room. So this localization gives triangulate category out of exact category. Also, there is some localization for ET categories. We have something which we call uh, hove twin quotation pairs. This construction unifies some known localizations via nice model structures. Uh, Abelian model structure is introduced by hove. The exact case was by Gillespie, and triangulated analog was by Young. How you hope to unify all of these localizations? And before stating our main theorem on the localization, let me briefly review the basics of ET categories. The notion of ET category was introduced in a, introduced in a collaboration with Jan Paru. So it is defined as a triplet of an additive category C uh, by additive functor E from C of times C to the category of small abelian groups. Uh, something which we call uh, realization of E. So what is the realization? Well, it is a correspondence which associates to any element delta of uh, E of C A to um, some sequence. Well, we call such an element delta an um, extension. So this realization S sends delta to some um, sequence. More precisely, it is an equivalence class of two term sequences starting from A and ending with C. So here, the equivalence relation, equivalence relation is given like this namely, two sequences x, y, and x prime, y prime are equivalent if there is some isomorphism in the middle. But we denote the uh, it's equivalence class by taking brackets 
like this. So, and the required conditions can be described in terms of X triangles. An X triangle is a pair of extension delta and the sequence in which the realization S sends delta to the, the equivalence class of this sequence. Well, we denote the X triangle in this way. Here is delta, and the sequence is here. In such an X triangle, the morphism X in the left is called uh, inflation, and the morphism Y on the right is called uh, deflation, just as in the case of uh, an exact category. And the sequence appearing here is called a conflation. So it is a, so an X triangle is a pair of extension and conflation. And also we call object C here, the cone of X, uh, it is determined by, um, I mean, up to isomorphism from X. And duality uh, object A here is called the cocon of Y. And before the detail of the conditions, let me introduce the category of extensions. So the category of extensions is studied in detail, for example, in a recent paper by Benetton, House, Hargland, Sandoy, and Shaw. In the category of extensions, objects are extensions, namely delta in E of C A for some uh, pair of objects C and A in the category C. The morphism from delta to delta prime is sometimes depicted like this. So here, delta is an extension, and delta prime is also an extension. So these are the ob objects. And the morphism from delta to delta prime is a pair of morphisms in the category C. So A and C are morphisms in C. And this should satisfy this equality. Let me explain uh, about this equality. Since E is a functor from C of times C, we can push delta by morphism A and also pull delta prime by morphism C. So this equality is saying that uh, delta pushed by A is equal to delta prime pulled by C. So it's something like the commutativity of this square. And we often abbreviate this A push delta in this way, namely. A push delta, and also the right hand side is abbreviated to C pull delta prime. So this equality is often written like this. Or more briefly, in this way, A delta is delta prime C. Yep. So this is a category of extensions. And on the other hand, in the category of X triangles, so objects are X triangles, and morphism between them is a triplet of morphisms in C, so depicted like this. So this triplet should satisfy the comp three compatibilities. And the first one is the commutativity of the delta square. And the second one is the commutativity of the right square. And the remaining third one is the 
the compatibility a delta equals to delta prime c. So it is saying that the pair a comma c is a morphism from delta prime and delta to delta prime in the category of extensions. Yes. So this is a category of extra angles. Now let me explain the conditions for ET categories in terms of extra angles. There are three conditions. The first one is the additivity of the realization. So it requires that if we are given two extra angles, then each term-wise direct sum becomes again an extra angle. So we take uh, direct sums term by term, then it becomes an extra angle again. Here, delta, delta plus delta prime is the direct sum of two extensions in the category of extensions. So this is the first condition. The second condition allows us to obtain morphism of X triangles. So a morphism of X triangles is, by definition, a triplet A, B, C, or morphism is in, in C, uh, like this. And if we lack one of these three, we can complete it into a morphism. Well, this condition corresponds to TL3 for triangulated categories. But because we cannot rotate X, X triangles, we have to consider three cases. More precisely, if we lack C, namely, if A and B makes the left square commutative, then there exists, exists some C. Uh, which forms a morphism of extra angles. And also, if B and C makes the right square commutative, then we can find some A to form a morphism of extra angles. And lastly, if we are given a pair AC, which is a morphism of extensions, then there is some morphism B in the middle, uh, which form a morphism of X triangles. And as in the case of triangulated categories, these complements are not unique nor functorial, so there doesn't exist any canonical choice. Yep. So this is the second condition. And the last condition is an analog of the octahedron axiom. If we are given two extra angles in this way, then we can complete it into an octahedron of this form. So this is in particular saying that inflations are closed by compositions. In the, in the given extra, extra angles, F and G are inflations, then in the completed octahedron, the composition of G and F is again an inflation. So inflations are closed by compositions. And again, since we cannot rotate X triangles, we also assume it's dual. And by duality, deflations are also closed by compositions. So this is all of the conditions in the definition of an ET category. So, the two, two typical examples of ET categories are exact categories and triangulated categories. The first example is an exact category. Suppose that 
suppose that C comma S is an exact category. Here S denotes the conflations for exact category, namely a given class of uh, kernel co kernel pairs satisfying some conditions. So starting from an exact category, for any pair AC, for any pair of objects AC in the category C, um, we can define the X1 group X1 C of A in this way. So it, it is a um, uh, set of equivalence classes of conflations starting from A and ending in C. And the equivalence, equivalence relation is the same as before, the same relation as before, yeah. And if these X1 groups are small, it becomes a um, priority factor to the category of small abelian groups. So let us require that these X1 groups are small. And then we have functor X1. So this is our E. And now we have to give a realization. We mark that any element and we are extension delta for this priority functor is of this form. Namely, it is nothing but an equivalence class of sequences. Hence, as a realization, we can take an obvious correspondence identity on which sends delta to delta itself. So in this way, we can regard an exact category as an ET category. And we remark that in this case, X triangles are essentially the same as conflations and with the information of delta in an X triangle is some, somewhat redundant. The other example is a triangulated category. So suppose C is a triangulated category. Then we can define a by additive functor by considering morphisms shifted by one. Namely, an extension for this by by additive functor is nothing but a morphism from C to A1 for each pair of objects in C. And now let us give its realization. For each such morphism, we can complete it into a distinct triangle of this form. And then we define S of delta to the equivalence class of the sequences appearing here. In other words, we can say that we defined X triangles to be distinguished triangles. And in this way, any triangulated category can be regarded as an ET category. Well, let me skip a bit. So exact categories and triangulated categories are typical examples of ET categories. And conversely, we can characterize among ET categories, uh, which are exact categories, uh, which are triangulated categories by very simple conditions. So let's see be an ET category. Well, this proposition one says that uh, this ET category becomes an um, exact category if and only if any inflation is monomorphic and any deflation is 
Epimorphic. No. And the next proposition two says that, well, maybe I wrote too much, but the second one is saying that C is naturally a triangulate category and it is equivalent to the first condition, namely any morphism in C is both inflation and deflation. Yep. So this condition characterizes of which ET categories are triangulate categories. And now let me move to our main part. For the settings, firstly, let C be an ET category, which I assume to be small from now on. Now we want to localize C, so let S be a class of morphisms in C. It is a class of morphisms to be invalid. To such S, we associate a full subcategory NS of C in this way, well, this is saying that the object in here is something which should become zero after the localization. Now starting from C, we take the ideal quotient by this NS. So we are killing uh, the ideal Consisting of, consisting of morphisms uh, which factor through some object in N. And then send the class S by this functor P to obtain S bar in C bar. And by using S bar, we localize C bar to obtain C tilde and denote the composition of these two functors by Q. Well, this Q is a, is a localization functor. Mm. If we invert the class S. So now the problem is to find a condition for S under which the resulting C tilde has a natural a universal it is structure. Our main theorem gives such a sort of conditions. Well, I do not explain the detail of these conditions, but MR1 and 2 are to make the calculation of morphisms in the localization easier. And the third condition, MR3, is claiming that S is compatible with the ET structure on C. And the last condition, MR4, is required so as to ensure that the inflations and deflations in the localization are closed by compositions. With these conditions, C tilde has a natural ET structure, which is universal in some sense. Instead of explaining the detail of these conditions, let me briefly sketch how to give ET structure on the localization C tilde to show that the construction is somewhat nat natural. Firstly, by MR1 and 2, we may calculate morphisms in C tilde easily by using roofs in C bar. So, any morphism in C tilde can be expressed as a roof in C bar. It is a pair of F bar and S bar in which S bar belongs to this S bar. And then we define E tilde by localizing the original functor E both from left and right by S bar. More precisely, we define E tilde of C A 
to be the set of equivalence classes of this type of triplet. In the middle, delta is an extension in the original E. And S bar on the right and T bar on the left are morphisms in S bar. So we denote an element in E tilde of CA in this way. It is an equivalence class of this sequence. And now we want to associate an X triangle to such an element T bar delta S bar. Well, since C is an ET category, we have an X triangle in C associated to the delta in the middle. So this is an X triangle in the original ET category. And then simply by composing S bar and T bar, we can define X triangle in C tilde. So this is a definition of ET structure on the localization C tilde. In the, in the remaining time, let's see how we can recover the known localizations. Let us introduce the notion of a six subcategory. Well, subcategory is assumed to be full additive and closed by isomorphisms. Such a subcategory is called thick if it is moreover closed by taking direct summons and satisfies uh, two out of the condition for conflations, namely in any conflation like this, uh, if two of A, B, C belong to N, then so does the third. And for a six subcategory N, we associate the following classes of morphisms L and R. L consists of um, inflations whose cone is in N. And R consists of morphisms uh, which are deflations whose cocons are in N. So um, these morphisms uh, uh, should become isomorphism, we hope. Yeah. And then we take the finite compositions of these morphisms to obtain a class of morphisms, morphisms S. Yeah. And let me remark that if C is triangulated, then SN agrees with both a and R. And now we want to apply our theorem to this SN. So the question is that when this SN satisfies the assumption of the theorem. And as our answer, it is fulfilled in each of the following two cases. Case A is that N is a by resolving subcategory. A six subcategory N is called by resolving if any object C admits a deflation from some object N in N and also an inflation to some object N prime in N. Well, if C is triangulated, this condition is al always satisfied by any six subcategory because any morphism, any morphism is uh, inflation and deflation.
The other case is that n is a percolating subcategory with unfortunately some technical conditions. N is called a percolating subcategory if any morphism uh, which belongs to the ideal n should admit a factorization in this way, namely there is a factorization into a definition to some object n in the category n followed by inflation. And if, it's, if C is an exact category, then this agrees with the original definition by Henrad Kram van Roosmalen. And the technical conditions here are always satisfied. For case A, suppose that uh, N is a by resolving six, sub six subcategory. In this case, morphisms in Sn can be written as a composition of R and N in this direction. And we can show that Sn satisfies the assumption of the theorem. Moreover, morphisms in Sn bar uh, are ones which are both ethnomorphic and monomorphic in the ideal constant C bar. And by the, by the theorem, C2 that becomes an ET category. But in this case, moreover, it becomes always triangulated. In this case, we cover the following examples. Following examples. So if C is triangulated, then this is nothing but the Verde quotient. And if C is exact, then this recovers Rumpf's local localization. And lastly, if C is uh, weakly idempotent complete, uh, ET category equipped with a Hovey twin quotation pair, then we can associate some by resolving six subcategory. And by the theorem, the resulting localization is triangulated, which was also shown in the, the earlier collaboration with Yang. For case B, suppose that N is a percolating six subcategory satisfying the technical conditions. Well, in this case, morphisms in SN can be written as a composition of morphisms in L and R in this direction. So it is in opposite direction compared to the case of uh, by resolving subcategories. And we can show that SN satisfies the assumption of the theorem. And by the theorem, C tilde becomes an ET category. And in this case, the resulting category tends to become an exact category. For example, if C is exact, then it automatically becomes exact without any additional condition. In this case, B recovers the following, following examples. If C is exact, then this localization uh, recovers the localization given in Henrad Kram van Roosmalen. So in particular, uh, if C is Abel, it is nothing but a cell quotient. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's very too fast, <laughs> sorry. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your, your nice talk. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions, comments? Hi. Thank you for the nice talk. I, I would 
uh, I would like to ask, I'm a little bit confused about the first step of the localization. You have to go to the ideal quotient and uh, uh, maybe you can give us an example in, a, in the case of triangulated categories, but what is going on with this idea of with the first step? Yeah, I'm sorry. If she's, tri if she's triangulated, um, probably we don't have to take ideal quotient. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, in, in this case, you, you go directly to the, 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 the quotient, uh, the, the next step. Uh, 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 am yeah, I right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. May I ask a question? Uh, also about an example. Um, for example, uh, let's take uh, let's take the category of complexes over an abelian category um we yes, just say with with the component wise split exact structure and we want to localize with respect to quasi isomorphisms um would this be uh, would this fit into the picture and uh, in this case in the first step would you uh, would you take the ideal quotient by all acyclic complexes let me see Yeah, so C is an um, exact category in that case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. mm. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, Mm, I hope it, it becomes some homotopy category here, but uh, why? <laughs> mm. Mm, so the, the resulting localization is the derived category, and yes. I hope this is a this is a homotopy category. Uh huh. Oh, I'm a, but I'm in a, but N, NS would be the subcategory of all acyclic complexes in, in that case. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, maybe that, that's also a, a good category, but it would be uh, a quotient already of the homotopy category. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Mm. Yeah, of, of, of course, of course, there is no no contradiction. Only the category C bar is a bit a bit unexpected. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. 
Well, it's not uh, an important question. Th um, thank, you for, mm, thank you very much for the talk in any case. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, if, if he localized um, like causal isomorphism, uh, the category complexes with the, uh, that, that exact structure, maybe uh, in the resulting localization, um, Maybe uh, X triangles are um, a bit lesser than the Dirac category. Maybe <laughs> because uh -huh. uh, because we are taking mm -hmm. relative theory in C. Mm -hmm. or, mm. It might be the case that then uh, um, not not all <laughs> not all triangles come from. Uh, the extra from oh, yeah, yeah, yes. No, I, I think that's okay. I mean, yes. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I can't ask clear, yeah. clearly. Sorry. No, no, no problem. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? What? So thank you again for your nice talk. Thank you very much. Um,